Right, um, it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera, but I just want to brief give a brief introduction to the new series that I'm doing while we're on lockdown because filming for my new documentary series is not going to really start till after June, I imagine, this year. But I pushed that aside for a moment. So what I wanted to do while I was in lockdown was to start a... Uh, start a series of informal discussions around climate change and I recently well just where we, uh, earlier no last weekend recorded a conversation with a young gentleman from South in India and we talked about the impact of climate change on the monsoons and how the mon monsoons are thus affecting people who are living in India now I have to tell you ahead, there's some technical difficulties. We had some technical problems, mainly with the audio and the connection between India and the UK. But that will be resolved in the in the next, next episode, as I have purchased some new gear just to make sure everything is top quality, because audio is important. Anyway, this series is going to be a series of informal conversations around climate change, and that will include Australia's wildfires, uh, wildfires in the US, climate anxiety, monsoons, and, well, we'll see where that goes, even perhaps a discussion around misinformation and climate change. But all in all, these conversations are there to raise awareness, and I hope they do. They'll there will be all Zoom conversations since we're in lockdown and it's going to be an international affair because we've got uh, in, incredible interesting conversation coming up from America I'm not going to say anymore I have a lady who I'm going to speak to in the UK around the increase in flooding and the impact that has on those impacted on the flooding and how that is connected to climate change and don't forget the wildfires, both in the US and Australia. So there's a lot of things going on. They're all going to be over Zoom. Hopefully the te technical difficulties will be smoothed out. So let's have a look. So anyway, this conversation, quick introduction. His name is Sri Hari from South India. He works in the finance department of, of his company. But he has a real passion about climate change, well, cl mainly the monsoons, but also he has a great deal of knowledge around climate change, how that climate change then impacts on the monsoons, the, the, the amount of rainfall, the impact it has on the w dry uh, season. So he has a great deal of knowledge, and I learned a lot from that conversation. So, once again, excuse the audio difficulties. It's an interesting conversation. He's a very interesting guy and it was a pleasure talking to him. So let's, the first induction be for Sri Hari and we're discussing monsoons in South India. Thank you guys. start with is a little bit to know a little bit about you and your connection with India monsoon and why you uh, analyze the monsoon and weather predictions uh, the basic reason is that uh, I had a passion on how the rains uh, uh, how the rains have been uh, forecasted so yeah. Uh, apart from my prof profession, where, where I do work in a staffing company, uh, where I do work in a finance department, okay. I have a passion, passion to follow on. So, which is uh, something interesting uh, as to how how rains pan out over India, how mm. the rains have been created, how how the factors that influence uh, monsoon or India. Mm. So, well, I uh, basically this, this is my passion to yeah. have. Uh, have a, have a forecast and, and content writing on uh, the monsoon of India. 
Okay, well, that's good because the monsoons are very important, integral to the, the crops and uh, people's livelihoods. Now, you said you, you're you quite interested in how uh, different things influence the monsoons. How is that? I know the last two decades that I've been researching this, the, the rains have been particularly heavy. As, how has climate change impacted on the monsoons, their variability, their level of rainfall and so on? How has that impacted on uh, the Indian monsoons? Yeah, basically, uh, what we say the climate change is that increase in greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. melting of the glaciers, rising in the sea, sea levels. Mm. Uh, these are all the factors that contribute to the climate change and, and we, they basically uh, affect the monsoon in India. So India's monsoon is one of the strongest uh, climate phenomena all over the uh, world as we okay. see that uh, it's, it's been uh, influenced by the trade currents that uh, cross over the Arabian Sea and, okay. and turn the Indian coast. Mm. So uh, there are many adverse effects on the monsoon due to the mm. climate change. Mm. Uh, uh, to talk on that, we, we, there's sustained variation in, in rainfall, in, in distribution yeah. of the rainfall over the country. Uh, a few, co few areas of the country receive scanty rains. Mm. Uh, a few, few parts of the country uh, witness floods, floods okay. uh, during yeah. the mountain, mountain time and a uh, few record normal rains. So it basically depends upon uh, the sea, sea temperatures that affect mm. the amounts, uh, basically called the local factor, which, okay. which majorly has an adverse impact on the mountain of India. For example, last year they said that it was in, uh, the monsoons were incredibly heavy in, in the amount of rainfall that it, uh, the, the impact was a loss of life of nearly 1,200 people and uh, lots of livelihoods. Is that becoming a regular issue now? People are more and more, you're seeing floods across India and the, the impact of it, the loss of life. Is, is that been a, a bigger, I know it's always been a problem, floods uh, for quite a while, but has this been an increasing issue that you're seeing? Uh, as we see many mountain areas of the coast, the west coast of India, the southern west coast of India is, is mm. prone to get floods. Uh, yeah. And also parts of northeast, northeast India, where we see states of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, mm. Chirapunji, where they get... Uh, my syndrome is one of the wettest places in the world. Uh, it, it receives around 7,871 millimeters of rain. So that's almost 11 meters of rain annually. Oh. So it's, it's considered to be the wettest place uh, in the world. Uh, so there is considerable variation in rain where uh, mountains receive, mountains of Northeast receive uh, ample amount of floods. Uh, considerably, when you see 2020 last year, mm. uh, it has been fl heavily flooded, uh, flooded, uh, and people were stranded. Uh, so, four months long the monsoon. Yeah, four months long for the monsoon uh, to pan out, and uh, after then we will be having a retreating monsoon. It just, just this monsoon, southwestern monsoon, is the monsoon that starts from June and lasts till September. Okay. After September, uh, only the partial parts of the country will be re uh, receiving the retreating monsoon. Okay. So the the main the main months of the uh, rains are from June till September, where the whole country is receiving the monsoon rains. So this is con considered to be the prime areas where uh, we concentrate on monsoon. We see floods um, variable over many areas spreading every year it's been changing. So some way or the other, you'll be seeing floods uh, due to increased rainfall uh, or the country. Some parts of the other may be witnessing fl uh, floods. Uh, yeah. Or the last last decade we see uh, there are variable amount of floods uh, lashing the country uh, mm. here. It's, it's been a regular routine every monsoon we expect. Uh, so you also know that Mumbai is uh, one of the prime cities of India. Yeah. So 
it, it, it witnessed uh, extensive floods last year. It's the financial uh, market city of India. Mumbai mm. is one of the financial market city of India, and and uh, it it witnessed a uh, worst flood uh, since 2005. It witnessed the okay. worst flood in 2020. Yeah. yeah. So we see floods uh, here and there every year. It mm. keeps on changing. So uh, yeah, you can't say that the floods are confined to that particular area. It, it keeps mm. on changing uh, due to increased uh, sea surface temperatures or the Indian Ocean. This is one of the major factors that determine yeah. the Indian month. That's right. The warming of the sea creates more moisture and so on. You have the effects of uh, monsoon. Yeah, that, the atmosphere is capable of uh, burning a hell lot of water. And uh, yeah. it, it, it has a cloud burst, if you could see that. Uh, you, you could have seen in the social media where, where mm. the floods uh, due to cloud burst. Uh, where, where within a single day, you'll be receiving around 40 to 50 centimeters of rainfall that is equal to 18 inches of rains in a single mm -hmm. day. That, that, that creates a flash flood or the region. Yeah. And, and this, this is one of the reasons why we see floods over many parts of the country. Yeah, I mean, when I was, I told you before with this interview, when I was younger, I was it spent a year in India and I remember the monsoons. And it's incredible the amount of water one experiences during that period of time. Uh, so, I mean, your predictions and so on the weather, uh, watching the weather, how is that used? Do many people you look at it to predict what they're gonna, how the actions they're gonna have to take to protect, protect themselves? Because it's often the most uh, poor that are impacted by these floods. Is that something that you're seeing that people are using your predictions to take some sort of action in some way? Yeah, many people appreciate me for my content. So I post regular content on on maybe uh, every once in two days, I, I update my okay. content post. So many people appreciated me on uh, the prediction and it, uh, 70, per, 70 to 80 percentage of my prediction got good. So is this a global GP? Is it, is it mainly used by people locally in, in India, I mean nationally, or do you see other people from abroad using your content and contacting you to find out when to travel to India? Yeah, uh, I basically post my content in my page and share it to many other groups. So okay. that, uh, yeah, many, so that it will be, uh, globally known so that what yeah. is happening in India, many people uh, are interested uh, in knowing about the Indian climate and, mm. and they are also keen to know how about the, how the pro monsoon is being progressing or the country, mainly yeah. the extremes that we witness every year during the monsoon. So you, you mentioned last year, Mumbai uh, received some of its worst floods. Do you know what, what actions are being taken to uh, mitigate some of these, uh, uh, what, what people experience during the flood, some of the uh, potential, I don't know, avoidance measures that the government might put in or other things, fl flood measures that are being put in place to help people cope with these torrential rains. So mm. the extensive rains that we get in the month is that we, we get the heavy rains during the July. July is one of the peak months of the mountain, and the second peak month is August. Yes. So these two months are critically watched, and uh, the corporation of Mumbai is cautious this year. This year they are being very cautious to mm. have the lead rains out. So uh, they have also spotted out the flood prone areas of the mm. city and they have taken appropriate steps to avoid stagnation of water and flooding. Of course. Yeah. And that's a real health problem then if you're having water sitting around and not draining away, that's a real health problem. Yeah, yeah. But basically Mumbai is also an island city where you'll be surrounded by sea, the sea water. Okay. So during the monsoon, you'll be getting waves, high waves due to yeah. uh, low level monsoon tide winds, which are too strong enough to hit the coast. Mm. So 
to avoid that many barricades have been planned and uh, many rocks have been planted or, or the street not to invade your land. So this oh, is okay. a step the corporation is taken to mitigate the extreme rains. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, we spoke, spoke about the floods and, and some of the, probably the negative side of the monsoons. Uh, are monsoons integral to, to India's way of life? I mean, obviously, you, you've got the really dry months. Are the monsoons that are something that's welcomed? Is it a relief from the hot weather? Is it you have the good, good hot weather, then you need the, the rain? Is that the case? That they're vital to the livelihood of many people. Uh, 2020 is one of the examples where we can state that June June month was an excess rainfall month mm. where where it started off with a swell of a cyclone called Nisarga. Okay. So as soon as we entered July, the monsoon has totally lost its control, and there there were uh, no materialization of low pressure areas. Mm. So, which which leads to heavy rains over the country. So, mm. there are lack of low pressure areas during July has also uh, made us to think as to how climate change has made an impact uh, mm. or the years uh, in draining the mountains. And our, 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 we don't see any kind of remnants from the Western Pacific to materialize into a new low pressure area or any kind of depression. Normally, mm. we, we see around two to two depressions in in the month of July. Uh, would be giving an extensive range over the parts of central India and northern India and okay. joint parts of western coast. So, so the last year's July was uh, really surprising for many forecasters all over the world. Mm -hmm. Where why July was not as a perf uh, not a performing month for the mountain since it, it's yeah. considered to be a peak month of the monsoon. So the the plate has totally changed in the month of August, where we saw five low pressure areas forming okay. back back low pressure areas that that brought. Uh, flooding situations into the parts of northern peninsula and parts mm. of central India. So August was considered to be one of the wettest months of the mountain with yeah. rising one, 127 per, 27 percent excess rains uh, over the month and it has been considered to be the highest rainfall received uh, since uh, 1883 where oh, really? such kind of back-to-back -back low areas over mm. the past uh, past century, so August was August two thousand twenty was one of the special uh, month where uh, we are surprised to see back to back low pressure area contrastingly opposite to July. Okay, yes, not and twenty twenty uh, has been a bad year. I mean, uh, for example, uh, twenty twenty in Australia and and the US has been one of the worst years, record years for wildfires. Uh, with regards to India, are you now seeing extreme heat in the dry months that uh, have probably not witnessed before? Yeah, probably you can witness uh, in the year of 2017, probably I, I may not be exact with the years, but mm. uh, in the last uh, three years, three to four years, we saw temperatures rising up to 51 degrees in northern India. Oh, yeah. So I mean, where, where we see the melting of the tar, the road, mm. the tar road, where we uh, saw the melting of the road. So the the uh, sunshine was so severe where mm. many people got strokes due to the sun, hot yes, sun. Yes. Uh, heat wave has been issued over the country. So yes. parts of uh, many, many people who are uh, witnessing heart disease have been. Uh, the victims of such hot sin mm. uh, during the summers or the northern India. And on the same case, you can see that Australia is also a desert mm. uh, where the, the, the central parts of Australia is also uh, mostly covered by desert, mm. where parts of northern India, uh, particularly in Rajasthan, we see mm. the Tar Desert. Uh, so sort of sustained increase in temperatures have uh, made uh, uh, situations uncomfortable for the people to carry on their life. So temperatures are also rising on the same go where the trend, trend is also in the rising rising mm. mode. So temperatures are nevertheless uh, <laughs> being taken under uh, low note. So mm. we see sustained increase in temperatures. 
So neither they really it affects our daily routine during the summers. Mm. And is that do you think as well due to climate change? Potentially due to climate change, we're seeing a warming up of the Earth's pole, which is causing a general rise in temperature because of greenhouse gases and so on. Yeah, rising of greenhouse gases, chlorofluorocarbons. Mm. So uh, air pollution is also one of the factor where you mm. can see the many urbanization is also one of the main factors where you keep on building, keep on adding buildings to the city, mm. extending the cities. Urbanization is, is one of the main factors where you see the concrete jungles are being constructed mm. or the various parts of the country, which which results in uh, the emission of uh, excessive heat where the land could not absorb the heat. Mm. This is one of the reasons why we see increased temperatures and, and also deforestation could also be the most alarming factor where people uh, are cutting, uh, cutting down the forests and making their uh, land to the use of agriculture. So mm. this is one of the reasons why we see increased temperatures or, or the world's even globally, you can see the sustained rise and increase in temperatures. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, we saw for the first time, I think in 2018, bushfires in Greece, Portugal, and I think Sweden. So yes, temperatures are rising everywhere. Even in the UK, where I live, we had records, I think it was last, maybe 2020 or 2019, record temperatures. Uh, Nothing compared to India, not 51 degrees, but uh, it was record temperatures for us. So yeah, no, definitely. So the service you're providing is vital because you've got you've got the heat side, but you're providing the the details about the monsoon, which really is uh, like you say used by a lot of people uh, who can predict what their their actions are going to be for that weekend or for the holiday, or whether they're going to have a torrential rainfall. Uh, just to finish off, uh, just to only round up uh, what your plans are, what you are hoping, are you hoping to go further in this, um, in this uh, part of prediction, weather predictions, and what are your predictions regarding floods and monsoons for the next few years? Oh, basically, it's too early to say an answer to your question because uh, we, we, as we progress towards the months of monsoon, at uh, the month of uh, May, probably it will be uh, the right time to answer uh, about our predictions because uh, now it's too early to say how the conditions okay. may be or the mm -hmm. seas over India and and. You, you you have been uh, hearing about the phenomenon called the El Nino and La Nina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. or which is prevailing or the East uh, Pacific Ocean uh, of course to Peru of South America. So they have an adverse impact on Indian Indian and Australian rainfall. So if it is going to be an El Nino year, you'll be witnessing less rainfall mm -hmm. because the easterly jet is being hindered by the El Nino warming of the Eastern Pacific Ocean, Eastern and Central Pacific Ocean. Hmm. Uh, will be hindering the easterly jet wave. So that, res uh, that results in declining of rainfall uh, for the monsoon. But uh, since this year, it's going to be a neutral year. So this year, it's, uh, oh, it's, it's going to be, be gradual. Yeah. Slip from yeah, this year, it's going to be a neutral year where we... Hmm. Uh, see a slip from Lanina, picking up Lanina to a gradual down to neutral pace. Mm. So this year it's got the rains are going to be really good for India. Uh, mm. And also we expect uh, floods, floods over many parts of the western coast. And I also expect floods over yeah. many parts of the western coast and parts of uh, central India. Mm. So this year it's going to be good rains for India. In, in terms of quantum of rainfall, it's going to be very good. Uh, about the quality, it's too early. It's just the, the quality, the quality is that we we can see that it, uh, it's about the distribution of the rainfall or the, okay. or the country. So the mm. quality remains with that fact that how the distribution takes place uh, or this year is it's too early to answer. But as per the quantum of rains, 
this year it's going to be uh, a very good year for rainfall in India, uh, starting June. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's good to hear, Sri Harry. No, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, and I do thank you for giving up your time in your evening. To